So in this video we are going to discuss the 9701 chemistry paper of examination series May June 2024 the question paper 5 and or 53 and let's start with question 1 in this video. So here is question 1 which says titration can be used to determine the concentration of dissolved oxygen in samples of river water and the procedure for the experiment is given here. So here is step 1, step 1 says uh, use 5 50 centimeter cube graduated syringes A, B, C, D, E to collect 5 samples, separate samples of 30 centimeter cube of river water. So here we are using these five different graduated syringes of the volume capacity of 50 centimeter cube and we are collecting 30 centimeter cube of river water from different places. Okay, So step 2 says in the laboratory carefully add 5 centimeter cube of 0.220 moles per dm cube of manganese to sulfate that is MnSO4 into the syringe A and mix well. So for what we are doing is in the syringe A we are collecting 30 centimeter cube of sample of river water and we are adding 5 centimeter cube of manganese sulfate of the given concentration here. In the next step we are adding 5 centimeter cube of alkaline aqueous potassium iodide in the same syringe and mix well. Then we are adding 10 centimeter cube of dilute sulfuric acid and again mixing well and in step 5 transfer the contents of syringe A into 150 centimeter cube of conical flask and rinse the syringe A using 10 centimeter cube of distilled water again and add the washings to the conical flask. So let's understand what have we done. We had taken 30 centimeter cube of the sample of river water to that we added 5 centimeter cube of manganese to sulfate to that we added 5 centimeter cube of potassium iodide and then added 10 centimeter cube of dilute sulfuric acid and that we have transferred to the conical flask and again we have added 10 centimeter cube of distilled water to the syringe and then we are using that washing again and also adding it into a conical flask. So in all you can see that there is almost 60 centimeter cube of the total volume of, uh, of river water. Uh, in which we have also added different reagents. Now in step 6 we are carrying out one accurate titration of all the contents in the conical flask with 0 0.0020 moles per dm cube of aqueous sodium thiosulfate using starch indicator. And then we are repeating the same steps for all the syringes that is from syringe B to E. Now the first sub question is that aqueous sodium thiosulfate can be prepared from Na2H2O3.5H2O here. Determine the mass in grams of sodium thiosulfate.5H2O required to prepare 500 centimeter cube of 0.002 moles per dm cube sodium thiosulfate. So if we are using this concentration we need to find out the mass and we are preparing 500 centimeter cube of sodium thiosulfate. So we have got the concentration and the volume we can find out the moles. Moles is equal to concentration into volume but then if you want to find out mass in place of moles we can write mass upon MR and we can find out mass. So again we can rearrange mass is equal to C into V into MR that is how we rearrange for the moles. First I hope you understood that moles is equal to concentration into volume but in place of moles we are writing mass upon the molecular mass relative molecular mass because the formula of n is equal to m upon mr that is mass upon molecular mass so we got the mass and so if we rearrange the equation we got this equation and for that we need mr now if we calculate the molecular mass of sodium thiosulfate it is 2 into the MR uh, not sorry MR it is uh, atomic uh, relative atomic mass of the sodium. So here we can check out from the periodic table that what is the uh, atomic mass of sodium given here. In the sodium we can find out that it is exactly 23.0 given here for the thiosulfate that is sulfur they have given 32.1 and for oxygen it is exactly 16. So this is how we are going to add up everything and we are going to calculate the mass 
molecular mass so it's 23 sodium sulfur it is 2 into 32.1 plus oxygen that is 3 into 16 plus 5 into 18 why because the mr of water is 18 so this is how we calculate the relative molecular mass of the hydrated sodium thiosulfate and we found out that it is 248.2 so now let's substitute all the values the concentration is 0 0.0020 into volume that is 500 centimeter cube but that has to be divided by 1000 to change it into dm cube and the mr that is 248.2 248.2 if we substitute all this we get the answer is 0 0.248 gram so uh, this is the rough work you can always write it properly if i write it properly then m is equal to 0 0.002 into 0 0.5 into 248.2 into 248 and the answer is 0 0.248 gram this is how we calculate uh, because here i have done all the work calculation in a very small space we can rewrite it and write it properly so here the answer is 0 0.248 gram and the second part of the same sub question is identify the piece of apparatus that should be used to prepare 500 centimeter cube of the sodium thiosulfate after required mass of the hydrated sodium thiosulfate has been weighed out so if we weigh out this much gram and if we are going to prepare the 500 centimeter cubes of the solution what is a piece of apparatus we are going to use and you can say that it is 500 centimeter cube of volumetric flask we are going to use because that's the standard uh, apparatus which we use to prepare a solution so 500 centimeter cube of volumetric flask has to be used as an apparatus now if we go ahead the graduation on each syringe are every one centimeter cube uh, the calculate the percentage error in the measurements of 5 cm cube of alkaline aqueous potassium iodide by the syringe and show your working. Now, if you are measuring uh, the graduation, the smallest graduation is 1 cm cube. So, what we can't measure is 0 0.5 cm cube. So, 0 0.5 we can't measure and if we are measuring 5 cm cube, we are actually measuring it twice. Why? Because we have to use it like uh, 0 cm cube to 5 cm cube so the error used will be twice so whenever we using such volumetric with such syringe we have to multiply the maximum error that is 0 0.5 into 2 why because we are using the minimum and the maximum marks both to measure the 5 cm cube so 0 0.5 into 2 now what is the volume we are using we are using a volume 5 cm cube so divided by 5 into 100 that is how we calculate the percentage error and so the answer is 20 percent the percentage error is 20 percent so this is how we calculate the percentage error let's go ahead and see what's the next question it says place one tick in each row in the table 1.1 to show the effect if any of using a larger volume of alkaline aqueous potassium iodide Al alkaline aqueous potassium iodide we are using and what if we use the greater volume so if we use the greater volume the uncertainty of the measurement uncertainty of the measurement will have no effect why because uncertainty of a measurement is how uh, wrong we measure it but then if we are using whatever volume that doesn't make any difference because the graduation will also remain same so no effect on the uncertainty but the percentage error if we calculate if the greater volume the percentage error will have a smaller effect the reason being we can see here that in the percentage error we took the volume in the denominator so if we are taking a greater volume the denominator becomes a greater and so the overall percentage error becomes smaller so that there will be a smaller effect on the percentage error of the measurement so here let's go ahead with this next part it says the sample in the conical flask and the prepared solution of sodium thiosulfate are provided describe the following procedure of the experiment using uh, the syringe a 
and the sub uh, question sub part is preparing the clean view rate before taking any reading so what exactly is as let's understand what is that that we are already having the sample of the river water in the conical flask we also have the solution of sodium thiosulfate ready now describe the following procedures for the experiment when we are using the syringe a okay so the first part is prepare the clean burette before taking any reading so if we are adding sodium thiosulfate in the burette how are we going to prepare our clean burette to take the reading further for the syringe a solution so what we say is that take the clean dried beaker clean dried beaker uh, sorry not beaker burette clean dried burette and rinse it with rinse it with the provided sodium thiosulfate solution provided sodium provided sodium thiosulfate solution sodium thiosulfate solution the next step is after rinsing will fill the burette with the same solution that is fill the burette fill the burette with sodium thiosulfate solution sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate solution so what are we doing here the procedure it says describe so we need to describe all the steps so first step is that we have already taken the clean dried burette and we are rinsing it with the sodium thiosulfate solution why because if it has some uh, part of the other particles dust particles or say water vapor or water droplets it should be rinsed off by the sodium thiosulfate solution only because the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate should not change because of the presence of other particles so we rinse it the burette with the same solution which we are going to fill in and then fill the burette and then the next part is that run some solution out run some solution out some solution out to adjust to adjust 0.00 cm cube and also to remove the air and to remove the remove air from the burette now you always must have observed that in a burette in the nozzle part at the bottom where we have uh, the tap or you can say the wall in this the smaller part of air is always present that has to be removed out from the bottom so that's why we run out some solution that so that the whole portion is filled up with the solution here the bottom and the top everything should have the solution okay the next part says carry out one accurate titration in step 6 okay so that shows that we need to describe how the titration has to be carried so what we can see is that after the burette and the solution in the conical flask is prepared how are we going to take out the first reading so what are we going to do is run or you can say add add the solution add the solution or you can even specify sodium thiosulfate solution from the burette from the burette from the burette into the conical flask into the conical flask add the solution add the solution drop wise add the solution drop wise towards the towards the end of the titration and of the reading also you can see or end of the i'll i'll write end of the titer and okay so if we are uh, adding drop wise towards the end of the titration we have to add it till there is a permanent color change so we can say that till we can see till we can see the permanent color change permanent color change now what do we mean by the permanent color change that 
when we are shaking continuously towards the titration after shaking the color should not go off so we can add that point also till we can see the permanent color change keep shaking the solution keep shaking the solution shaking okay the mixture in the conical flask we have to specify so keep shake, shaking the mixture in conical flask mixture in conical flask during the process during the process that is how we calculate the accurate reading find out or uh, measure the accurate reading so d next part suggest why the reaction mixture is mixed well in step 2 and 4 step 2 and 4 you can see that we have added manganese sulfate then um, in the third step what we had added in the third step we had added alkaline potassium added and then we had added 10 centimeter cube of sulfuric acid so they are asking that why the mixture is mixed well in step 2 and 4 and there is a very simple reason that the reaction is completed is completed thoroughly or uh, properly that's how we can write it the reaction is completed thoroughly so that it is mixed well now draw a table for recording the titration results for the five samples in syringes a to e now if we want to draw a table we need to decide about the headings also and what should be the uh, main parts of the table is that of course we are going to label the uh, uh, columns as syringes a b c d e but then the there should be a final uh, final reading um, initial reading and the title that is the difference in the readings so here i have drawn a rough table obviously you will draw the table properly with the scale as i don't have a scale on the screen i am drawing it in a rough way but draw it properly and here this uh, rows should be measure uh, labeled as final reading final readings in centimeter cube you also need to mention the units <coughs> initial readings initial readings again in centimeter cube and then we can write as a tighter that's the difference again in centimeter cube the units should always be uh, mentioned properly that is in what unit are you going to measure so here if we are measuring the volume of the burette it should be mentioned as centimeter cube properly in the bracket wherever we are drawing the table fine let's go ahead with the next part it says the overall reaction taking place in the experiment is shown here a student carries out the experiment and determines the mean titer to be 12.65 centimeter cube calculate the concentration in moles per dm cube of dissolved oxygen in the river water now this 12.65 centimeter cube is the thiosulfate solution volume and we have already seen that the concentration of thiosulfate is 0 0.0020 so that's the concentration so concentration into volume that is 12.65 and that i'm dividing it by thousand to change it into dm cube so this will give us the moles and that is 2.53 into 10 power minus 5 moles that's how we calculate the moles of sodium thiosulfate now it's the moles of sodium thiosulfate what are the moles of oxygen so moles of oxygen now that is going to be four times less so we're going to find it out by 2.53 into 10 power minus 5 divide by 4 that's how we find out the moles and the concentration is obviously it's moles divided by volume so here the answer is 6.325 into 10 power minus 6 and if we substitute the same value that is 6 moles that is 6.325 into 10 power minus 6 divided by the volume now what is the volume of the gas syringe which we had taken uh, in the for the flask is is 30 centimeter cube now 30 centimeter cube again has to be divided by 1000 so river water what we had taken was 30 centimeter cube so we are taking the volume of oxygen containing water as 30 centimeter cube and the answer is 2.108 into 10 power minus 4 that's the concentration so 
2.108 into 10 power minus 4 moles per dm cube of the concentration of oxygen is present in the given river water. Now the next sub question says freshly distilled water does not contain any dissolved oxygen. So a student decides to run the procedure on the sample of freshly distilled water at the end of uh, at the end and obtains a value of 2.26 into 10 power minus 5 moles per dm cube dissolved oxygen. So this is the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the freshly prepared distilled water. Now the sub question is suggest why the student did not get a value of 0 moles per dm cube and assume the procedure was carried out correctly. Now that shows that the freshly distilled water may not contain dissolved oxygen but then the other samples of the solution which were used for the titration may contain oxygen. So that is how we write the answer that the other solutions, the other solutions, other solutions used for the experiment for the experiment or for the procedure anything can be written for the experiment contains dissolved oxygen contains dissolved oxygen and that is why we do not get uh, the reading as 0 0 but to some minute extent the oxygen is present. And so the next part is suggest how the value of 2.26 into 10 power of minus 5 moles per dm cube could be used to improve the answer. So as simple as that, that we can subtract the value, subtract the value that is subtract 2.26 into 10 power minus 5 from, from the, from the final concentration, final concentration final concentration of oxygen of oxygen calculated of oxygen calculated that is uh, calculated in the different samples of river water. So that is how it can be corrected and the last sub question is suggest why this method is unsuitable for the samples of tap water that have been purified by chlorination and so contain Cl2. Okay. If chlorine is present in the tap water, we can't use this method because chlorine also reacts with the manganese sulfate or the sodium thiosulfate solution and just like the oxygen. So readings are not going to be accurate only for oxygen, but we need only for oxygen. So we can write that chlorine also reacts, chlorine also reacts with some of the reagents or we can specify with chlorine also reacts with manganese sulfate that is MnSO4 2 and the only reason is that the chlorine is also an oxidizing agent so it will just react just uh, like an oxygen okay so here is question 1 ending we will discuss question 2 in our next uh, video and I hope everything the whole process why the answers given so are very clear